Hello, welcome to VegFest Summerfest Online. My name is Luke Poulton, and what you're about to see is a section from my show, Bad Movies. Um, <laughs> so if you couldn't hear that properly, he says, Neil Bog, it's Goblin spelled backwards. Um, I'm guessing, with it being called, you know, to Troll 2, they couldn't call the town Law because it just doesn't have the same ring to it, because you know, it's troll backwards. But the acting in this film, I'll just play, you, play another, another great clip. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my God! <laughs> 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 and here's, here's one final one for you. Can I help you? Coffee. There's no coffee here in Nilbog. It's the devil's drink. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> Bacon. Are you crazy, boy? We're vegetarians here in Nilbog. They're vegetarians, but they eat humans. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's primary school acting in that film. And you know, you're saying, oh, my kid was great in that nativity. They played a great Joseph. Why are we on the subject of nativities? Kids playing Mary and Joseph and carrying around a baby is just odd. Your kid was terrible in that nativity, but they would have been great in this movie. And that's, Troll 2 starts us off in the so bad, it's good. It's one of those movies where you can hang out with friends, open up some drinks, open up some drinks, hey, <laughs> crack open some beers with the lads, and, uh, and watch Troll 2. And that leads us on to another cult classic, the Room. Yay. Who here has seen The Room? Yeah. Uh, that poster really sells it to you. <laughs> that is Tommy Wiseau. Uh, Tommy Wiseau said that this film cost three million to make. You can't tell because it looks like a student film. And also, he's, when this first film first got released, he said that it was a drama. But then when everyone laughed at the film, he said, no, it's a black comedy. It's meant to be like that. <laughs> and I'll play you, I'll play you some, uh, some clips from, uh, from this as well. I did not well. hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I didn't just turn it up. He said, oh, hi, Mark. That's, uh, <laughs> you didn't get that. Um, you see this here? Uh, they're not even on a roof. This is actually just green screen. <laughs> They didn't care enough with this movie that they didn't bother to go outside. Uh, <laughs> play another, another great one. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I have seen this film eight times. <laughs> at Prince Charles Cinema, and I just love it. It is it's a great movie, but the best thing about the movie is when you go to screenings, people throw spoons at the screen, plastic spoons, and you're wondering why. And that's because throughout the whole movie, there are framed pictures of spoons. <laughs> but no one knows why. <laughs> and I'll play you one of my favorite bits of the quickest dialogue in a film ever. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> and that is The Room. Now, I'm going to take you on to another category. And in this category, we're going to start with Shark Exorcist. <laughs> Satan has Jaws. Now, the trailer for Shark Exorcist says, you've seen Jaws, you've seen The Exorcist, now get ready for Shark Exorcist. Right, I'm very ready for this. The post with this massive shark on fire with a priest hung up across. That's right, I'm very ready now. Got halfway through the movie, realised I could hear the cameraman breathing. <laughs> Ah! 
In that scene, he's also filming a woman why she is undressing into her bikini. Oh. <laughs> Which makes it even more uncomfortable. <laughs> but the story of this film is, a uh, story of this, yeah, masterpiece of the film, is that a nun sacrifices someone into a lake, then a shark that is in the lake comes and eats the woman, then the shark is possessed, <laughs> and, uh, you can tell it's possessed because it has glowing yellow eyes, but this film also, I'll give it props to one scene. It does the scene from Jaws, but instead of saying you're going to need a bigger boat, they're doing an exorcism and they say you're going to need a bigger cross. <laughs> and now we move on to House Shark. <laughs> There's a theme here. Uh, we get about 10 bad shark movies every single year, and I would know because I watched them all. Uh, you're gonna be, need a bigger house. Uh, house shark. Shark. House shark. <laughs> so this film opens. <laughs> so this film opens with a woman stripping completely naked to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> As we all do. <laughs> then being pulled down the toilet by a shark. <laughs> That's the shark spin coming out of the toilet. Um, and this is what the shark looks like. <laughs> so the shark eating someone. There we go, there's some people running from it. Uh, not sure why it has two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is again. So both of these movies, Shark Exorcist and House Shark, fall into the so bad, it's bad. They are movies that completely drain you of what when you're watching them. House Shark is an hour and 52 minutes long. A movie called House Shark should not be an hour and 52 minutes long. The only film that should be an hour and 52 minutes long is a good thriller, not a movie like this. But you're saying, look, how did you get into bad movies? My dad and I, so I grew up in Chelsea, Essex. So, so I'm an Essex lad if lad stands for lonely and depressed. <laughs> and every single weekend we would go to primetime video and we would rent a movie. And at that point we didn't have our phones to read what the movies were about, so we just went by the blurb on the back and the front cover. And one time we rented a movie where a woman was chained to a hot dog stand. <laughs> and for years we just thought the movie was called Hot Dog Stand Movie, because we couldn't remember the name of it. And then I recently decided to search up Hot Dog Stand Movie. It turns out the movie is called Liberty Stand Still, and you think that sounds like a great name for a thriller, but then it just turns out that the main character is called Liberty. <laughs> But in 2003, my dad and I rented Cabin Fever. Uh, my uncle would recommended it to us, uh, and my dad hated this movie. Uh, cabin Fever is about the people that go to a cabin, the water has a virus in it, a flesh-eating virus, and then they all start to get infected with this flesh-eating virus. That's uh, showing you a lovely, lovely picture from the movie. But one of my favorite scenes is uh, when a man decides to be uh, homophobic about squirrels. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go shoot some squirrels. Why would you want to kill squirrels? Because they're gay. <laughs> Genius script. But this movie also has one of my favorite scenes in any movie ever. Uh, one of the guys has been infected with the virus and he goes to a shop on the side of the road to try and get help. But outside the shop is Dennis. And, uh, oh my God. Dennis, with his bright blonde mullet, begins, sees the guy and begins to shout... Pancakes! Pancakes! No pancakes. Pancakes! No pancakes! If you couldn't tell what was going on in that scene, uh, why screaming pancakes? The scene goes into slow motion. Dennis does a spin kick, and then bites into the man's hand and realizes that it's not pancakes. 